embarrass Eric because I know a lot about Eric thanks to Kendall. But I won't <laughs> use most of that information. Our speakers today are from our host, the York Revolution, and are going to be Rotarian Eric Menzer, President and General Manager, and Mark Mason, Team Manager. Eric is well known to all of us, having been strongly involved in and deeply committed to the York area community, economic, and social development for many years. His impact here at the stadium, as Central Penn Business Journal said, and this is a quote, the most successful minor league sports franchises are the ones that are integrated into their communities, according to a team owner, and Menzer's experience in York lets him do just that in a general manager spot that usually goes to a career baseball person. Already, he's making his mark since starting in 2010." End quote. And Mark Mason, following a highly successful three-year term as pitching coach, Mark Mason takes over the reins, entering his first season as York Revolution manager. The 2013 Revolution season will be his 27th you don't want that old. It will be his 27th year as a coach, either at the collegiate or professional level. And as a player, just to tie in with the, on this day in history, Mark pitched in the Pittsburgh Pirates organization. Eric. Well, good afternoon, and uh, thank you so much for being here. It's always uh, a, a great day to have everyone out. I want to acknowledge uh, a couple people in front of me before I start, and actually a third person. First of all here, uh, Bill Shipley, almost all of you I think know Bill, a uh, significant member of the York Revolution. <laughs> Second of all, the uh, person who used to come sit at this table, uh, back here with us to be honored uh, tomorrow night, retired manager Andy Edgeberry. <laughs> And um, Andy, lest you get any ideas, but speaking of people who have come out of retirement, you're used to seeing him behind the front desk at the Yorktown Hotel, but I'm very pleased to introduce the newest member of the York Revolution Usher staff, Mr. Andy. Yeah. Yeah. I told you we'd get him out of the house. <laughs> so uh, welcome indeed to my second favorite day of the baseball year. Uh, tomorrow, of course, is my favorite day, opening day. Uh, but today's my second favorite because it's so much fun to host you all here. Uh, obviously, you're here because you're a member of the 35th largest, 35th largest <laughs> Rotary Club in the world. Uh, but for me, when I look out at you, uh, what I see is our customers in the best sense of that word. Uh, because almost everyone in this room is a, is a customer of ours at some level. As a ticket buyer, a Skybox owner, an advertiser, a member of a nonprofit board that is the beneficiary of one of our events, a renter of Sovereign Bank Stadium for an event or any one of a dozen more different ways that you can be our customer. And I say the best sense of the word because the fact that we're all customers of each other is at the heart of making our local York economy work, which is also what makes our community work. Uh, if all of us just did business through a series of distant transactions with nameless and faceless companies, we'd have very little stake at making each other successful. But we don't do that. We have to live together, so we choose to do business together in a manner that's consistent with the values of Rotary, the four-way test. I hope that when you do business with us, you can always give the right answer to these questions. When you ask us for information, is the answer the whole truth? When we conduct a transaction, is it fair to all involved? When you're here enjoying, enjoying a game, does it build goodwill and better friendships? And when we work together to raise money for a local nonprofit, is it beneficial to all involved? And it's really interesting to me that of everything Rotary publishes, the one that's sort of the old chestnut stands the test of time the best. And that Rotary four-way test is the essence of our business model, our community business model, the basic proposition that keeps us in business. Uh, I've said before, and I'll say again, that at the highest level, uh, I feel like my company has been entrusted with a community asset, not just the magnificent building we operate, but the business, a business that contributes to the quality of life in our community in many, many ways. Now, no doubt, those of you who are Skybox holders and original long-term sponsors who stepped up early and enthusiastically had the vision to commit to an unknown proposition that continues to be the economic linchpin of this public-private partnership. This building, Sovereign Bank Stadium, is owned by the York County Industrial Development Authority, and our relationship with them is the epitome of a public-private partnership. 
That's how the economics of minor league baseball works. When you need to be an affordable family destination that offers low cost, uh, low cost family fun. We're not a charity, of course, and we wouldn't present ourselves as worthy of your charitable dollars. But I think most of you know what I mean. When you're here on a beautiful summer evening, and the crowd rises as one to cheer Corey Thurman as he walks off the field, pumping his fist after a called third strike, wearing a jersey that says York on the front. Right. There's no purely economic rationalization for why you feel so good about being associated with us. Instead, we hope that you weigh the value of your team, helping to define your community, providing something special for your employees, bringing your good times, excitement, and wholesome family entertainment that lasts for generations. But as I said, we take our part of this responsibility seriously. I tell our staff all the time, they get tired of me saying it, I know that my goal is to have people walk into this ballpark and marvel at how we keep it looking so good. I hope you feel that way. For the third straight offseason, we've reinvested in the ballpark with gallon upon gallon of paint, dozens of sheets of plywood, <laughs> hundreds of square yards of carpet and drywall, plenty of rubber roofing and tar, at least a couple spools of network cable, hours of concrete repairs, a new press box window and more. Undoubtedly, the most obvious of these projects is a substantial renovation of our playground. Uh, those of you with kids and grandkids may have memories of soggy mulch and tired feet. And it turns out there was a reason that they called this area of the city the swamp back in the day. Uh, so I'm happy to tell you that both the soggy and the mulch are gone. And if you have tired feet now, well, that's your fault. Uh, we've added stormwater inlets and installed significant new drainage under the playground. And we've, we've re we have replaced the mulch with artificial turf. And I have to give a shout out to our friends at C.S. Davidson for their help with that. We also replaced and enlarged the playground perimeter fence to improve the safety and control of that area. And added six new benches that match the ones out in Brooks Robinson Plaza for parents to rest on while their kids play. The other big thrust in this all season was to advance the goal of putting our money where our mouth is when it comes to doing business locally. In this case, the focus was on increasing the local presence in our concession offerings. I'm thrilled to say, really thrilled this one, to say that Liquid Hero has joined Mudhook <laughs> as downtown York Fair is being offered at our ball park. I, uh, I, I certainly can't say for sure, but I don't know that many minor league stadiums can say that they have two beers brewed within three box blocks of their ballpark being served at the facility. <laughs> another exciting addition is New Grounds Coffee Roasters. New Grounds is another locally owned business. This one's on West Market Street in York, and they'll be offering both hot and iced coffee drinks from their new spot at the first base concession stand. Pretzel Twist is another central Pennsylvania business. They debuted last year here with phenomenal success. And so we've now doubled their cooking capacity so we can increase our contribution to the dough and butter consumption of your county. <laughs> and uh, also, uh, also not necessarily local, but in the category of uh, increased calorie count, we've created a standalone nacho cart so we can expand the variety of that popular item that we offer. Uh, where's Rick Ayers and Andy Siebel and the Welsh Band guys? Yeah, I've got one for you. <laughs> Uh, Wells Band is obviously a very significant sponsor of ours, so we've continued to expand our non-traditional offerings this year, adding more healthy options, such as a uh, fresh-cut fruit uh, selections and a garden burger, and we've renovated the deli once again to speed up service for those made-to-order sandwiches. And uh, lest we get carried away with the healthy thing, we've added one more vegetarian option, which is a deep-fried peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> Rick, that's just for you. I won't tell Maria, I promise. <laughs> One other thing I wanted to mention is that we're always looking for ways to use this building well beyond baseball, and this year we're excited to announce that we've partnered with the Cultural Alliance of York County to bring York's free Community July 4th fireworks celebration to Sovereign Bank Stadium. The night will start with a free family carnival at about 6 o'clock, paired with picnicking in the outfield. And I haven't told our groundskeeper that yet, so don't, <laughs> don't say anything. Um, and a family movie on the video board, and then topped off with a spectacular fireworks show at about 9.30. So we hope you will all make plans to spend your Independence Day with us this year. And uh, one other thing I did want to mention, and, and I actually didn't have this in my script, but we're, actually, we're announcing this today. Uh, many of you know that, uh, that Brooks Robinson is part of the ownership group for our organization. And in fact, Brooks will be here tomorrow night with Andy to participate in the unveiling of retired jersey numbers here in the ballpark. And Brooks has always told me that as honored and humble as he is to have different parts of Sovereign Bank Stadium and the Brooks Robinson Plaza named here for him and have us do all these things, that he's always wanted to find a way to, to sort of more permanently give something back to the York community. So we've worked with Brooks, and I'm very proud, proud to tell you 
that this year, uh, our golf tournament, uh, this will be the first year that it will become the Brooks Robinson Classic. And through Brooks's work and connections, we have partnered with the Cowden and Senior Foundation to bring their programming to at risk youth in the city of York. And we will have two local partners that will be the beneficiaries now, uh, along with matching money from the Cal Ripken Senior Foundation uh, from the Brooks Robinson Classic, and that will be the York City Little League and the YMCA of York in York County. Yeah. Now, that all feels great, of course. It only works if you sponsor the tournament or come out and play. So uh, be looking for more information on the Brooks Robinson Classic, but Brooks is scheduled to be here for the tournament and it should be a lot of fun. So now, enough with the off the field stuff, and let me turn it over to the man of the hour, who tomorrow night is gonna make his official York Revolution managerial debut. Uh, Mark, as you heard, came to York in 2010 to serve as Andy's pitching coach, after a long career as a manager and a pitching coach in the Frontier League. And all that happened in the three years that Mark served as our pitching coach was two Atlantic League championships, and his pitching staff leading the league over those three years with a 221 and 183 record. When Andy confirmed last year that he was really, really, really serious, <laughs> really serious, <laughs> you are retired, right? <laughs> okay. When Andy confirmed that he was really serious this time about retiring, uh, there was no doubt in my mind that Mark was the man to, to replace him. Uh, Mark's going to talk a little about this, but I will tell you that an absolute key factor in winning in free agent minor league baseball is evaluating talent and working connections to put the best initial team on the field and then continuing to rebuild the lineup as players earn a return to affiliated baseball and even, as happened last year for our pitcher Sean Hill, back to Major League Baseball. I know for a fact that Andy agrees with me that Mark has been in instrumental in building those revolution rosters the last three years and knock on wood, I think he has done it again. So please join me in welcoming our new manager, Mark Mason. Thank you, Eric, and uh, thank you, Edge. Thank you. <laughs> it's my honor to stand here in front of you today as the new manager of Revolution. Um, you know, it's just been a wild trip, basically. Minor league baseball is a wild trip. Every year is different from how many players you have to turn over and roster. But we did have a great three years of pitching here because I had great pitchers here. and. When you have good players, you're a good coach. And, you know, so it was really, really, you know, it's, it's really crucial on the recruiting end for us to bring talented guys here. You know, you can, uh, you can bring in a lot of players and you can be a great coach, but you do have to have talented guys, and we've been fortunate enough to do that um, the past three years for sure. So with that, I would like to say I have brought some of the talented players here with, with me today to the lunch, but I would like to start with my coaching staff. Uh, please rise, John Halama, my pitching coach. And Dino Polanco, Polo, I know you're here somewhere. Polo is our hitting coach and our third base coach. The players that I have with us here today, pitcher Corey Thurman. Pitcher Chris Regas. Pitcher Chris Cody. Pitcher Stephen Penny. Notice there was a theme there right now. <laughs> but we're going to break that up now. Outfielder Jeff Urantino. <laughs> Pitcher Joe Torres. <laughs> Pitcher Josh Judy. Oh. And Pitcher Wade Courtney. You know, the first thing that I would say, I know they mentioned that I've been coaching for close to 30 years. Um, I have been in this league prior to coming to York in 2010. I coached in Atlantic City in 2000. And I will say without question, the talent 
the quality of play and the quality of players that are in this league now as opposed to then <clears throat> has tremendously increased. The, the product on the field now is, is very good. It's a lot different than it was a while back. And a lot of that is because Major League Baseball is changing the way they do things in their minor league system and it's allowing us to get some of the more experienced guys and as you see on our roster this year, uh, even more former Major League players. <coughs> So I think that may be a trend that's starting to go here in the Atlantic League. Um, this league is no joke. I mean, it is no joke as far as the talent goes. If you take this lightly as a player, uh, you get humbled really fast. Uh, this is one of those games where you're either humble or you're about to be. Which <laughs> 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 is pretty much the way it works in, uh, in baseball. You know, our Managing styles, I know I've managed some games here in the past for different reasons, and you know, uh, <laughs> maybe we could get to that, but I don't think it's over. But, uh, no, but I mean, it, you know, etch as I man, you know, our managing style is. Um, <laughs> it, it could be a little different. <laughs> No, I mean, we both, we both agree, you know, we talk about a lot of things in a dugout every year and every game, and, you know, we think I might be a little more aggressive maybe to a fault, um, running bases and things of that nature, but I know Edge likes the long ball, I do too, um, you know, but basically we expected to win, and I think that's the number one thing you have to do no matter what you do in a career. You have to expect to win, expect to be the best, because if you're not expecting that, you'll probably never have a chance to get it. <coughs> so, you know, my expectation is I expect to win every night. You don't see me jump up and down and go crazy when we win because I expect to. The losses wear me out way more, way more. You know, I expect to win arrogant, confident, whatever you want to call it. I expect my players to feel the same way. Aggressive, you know, I'm an aggressive type manager. Believe it or not, I'm an aggressive guy, really. And you'll probably get to see a lot of that this year. I had a hard time doing that with Ed here because he would just hand me the lineup card and say, I'll see you in the dug in the <laughs> But, uh, you know, so I, you know, I have, a, I have a streak in there sometimes that the umpires heard some things last year, but for whatever reason felt uh, they wanted to keep me around the game a little bit. So, uh, but I am very aggressive and I want the players to play that way. And I expect 100% effort, you know, and it's not that I expect that I demand it from the players. You know, the whole reason why the players are here is to showcase their talent so that they get an opportunity to go on like the Sean Hills and the Scott Rices where they can go back to Major League Baseball. And we afford the players an opportunity to do that here. So my job is to make sure that they take full advantage of that. Minor league baseball at our level is instant gratification baseball. There's thousands of players that want to come here and play. I get emails every day, I get phone calls every day, agents, players, former coaches, former players, everything you can imagine as far as, you know, communication wise is the people that want to get a hold of me, you know, it, it's, it's all the time. So it's up to the players to do the best with what they have and what we provide them here. This is an opportunity for them. We've won two championships in three years. That's true. And I will tell you, from the end of the roster in 2010 to the end of the 2012 roster, there were only four players on that roster last year that ended the season with us that were here in 2010, just four. So we are going to have turnover. You're going to have turnover. But that's what it's about. And hopefully it's good turnover. It's not turnover because we have to let guys go for not performing. It's turnover based on their great performance. And it makes us find other players that come in here. So, you know, I want to win. I want the fans to be excited about coming to the ballpark. I want championships, but I want my players to get an opportunity as well. That's what I want. 
So I don't want one thing or two things. I want everything. That's what I want. And that's the way it's going to be. I want everything. Because when we get players signed to go on back to major league organizations, you look at our roster this year with the amount of former major league players that are here, people want to come here. The word is out, <clears throat> excuse me, the fan base, the host family situation we have here is outstanding. The front office, the ownership, the facility, it all, it all fits. We win. We get players picked up. That's success in minor league baseball. That's what it's all about. You know what I mean? That's what it's all about. So I want all of it for the players. You know, to me, this is not about me as a manager. This is about them as players. You come to the ballpark to watch them. They put the show on, and that's what I want, and that's what I expect. You know, it doesn't matter as a manager anyway. I mean, Etch will tell you when we win, the players are great. When we lose, we stink. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it really, it really doesn't matter. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a no-win situation for us, and we know that when we do it. You know? Okay, hey, the players are great. You know, we'll talk to them. That's awesome. You lost. What's wrong? <laughs> I don't know. Go talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the one thing that I want to share, there's a lot of people that don't know this story um, as to how I came to York. Uh, to, in 2009, in the fall of 2009, I was managing the Washington PA, and I was talking with Butch Hobson about some players that I would send him periodically from the Frontier League, where we had a much younger age group of guys that I felt could play in this league, and this would be a big step for them to prove themselves in their career. And during the conversation, Butch said to me, he said, uh, he said, Mace, would you like to come back to the Atlantic League? And I said, well, you know, what do you have in mind? And Butch said, well, I'm looking for a pitching coach in Southern Maryland. And I said, well, let me think about it. And we talked, and you know, Butch and I agreed that I would go to Southern Maryland. Two days later, Butch called me and he said, uh, how would you feel about going to York? <laughs> so I said, uh, are you going to York? And he said, no. He said, but Etch is in York. And Etch is going to need a pitching coach and, you know, some different things. So I talked to Etch on the phone, and that was the first time we had ever talked. And I ended up here. And it was one of the greatest things that's ever happened to me. I love working with him. Uh, but, but that story in itself is just a microcosm of minor league baseball. You know, what a strange trip it's been. I could have been in Southern Maryland, now I could be in Lancaster, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, but I'm here. And, I, and I'm thrilled to be here. You just, you don't know how things are going to work out in, in this sport. And every year is different. You know, people ask me, what is your goal? You know, you know what my goal is? To get through 2013, be successful, have a great team, put on a show for great fans, make everybody happy, and then we'll deal with 2014 when that comes. That's just the nature of this business. I've been 15 years, 17 years coaching professional baseball. I've been with Washington, I've been Ohio Valley, I've been Chillicothe, I've been York. You just, you never know where you're gonna be. So, I would love to stay here. I've made my home here. I'm a permanent resident here in York since 2010. You know, so I love everything about it. And, uh, and I'm really honored and humbled to, uh, to be here in front of you today as the manager and to be able to lead this team out there tomorrow. So I want to thank you for your time. If anybody has any questions at all, you know, speed up rules maybe. I don't know if we would get into that too. Uh, but no, whatever questions you may have, we can, um, I can see what I can help you with. Did you receive any personal instruction on either dirt removal during the game or, or theft of bases? <laughs> yeah. You know what? It, I think that might have been some of the back issues. I'm actually having some back issues. <laughs> I, 
I, I think oh. it's the office. I think it's the office. We talked about that yesterday. Oh. Uh, I, you know what? Edge has his own thing. You know, he, I don't know if I could get the bases up out of there, to be honest. I'm not sure. No, we, we, we never went over that, but I've seen it enough times. I think I can try, try to replicate that. Yes. How long do you have? <laughs> no, just, no, you know what? The, the speed up rules for me, based on what I've seen, uh, you know, from a baseball standpoint, I do think there are some things that are going to be a little detrimental to what we're trying to do as managers. I really think if we leave it up to the managers and the umpires to hustle the players in and out. Um, if we keep the pace of play going, you know, and, and those types of things, I believe that we can have a good, you know, a good pace game with a 2.45 to 3 to three hour time limit. Um, there are certain times in the game where you have to make some managerial changes, you have to go to the pitching mound, you have to match up pitchers and hitters. You know, and I mean, I just think if we can keep the pace of play moving, am I a big fan of a guy with a stopwatch and telling my pitcher that was 13 seconds instead of 12? That would probably be my first ejection in the years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I really don't think the umpires are going to go to that degree. I think that if it's really blatant, then I think they'll address it. But. If we can cut 15 or 30 minutes off a game every night and we play 140 of those, um, that might make our legs feel a little better at the end of the year. So, uh, so I, yeah, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in fan of speed, you know, I'm a fan of speeding the game up. I'm in favor of that. As long as, in my opinion, we do it the right way. We do it the right way, which is not limiting managers from managing. That's, that's my biggest concern. Anybody else? Okay, thank you very much and we'll see you